Share Shootout here on CNBC Africa, first in business worldwide. Your battle royale, stock picking fisticuffs, call it what you like. We like to call it the meanest and most vicious stock picking show on TV. I'm Bruce Whitfield, judge, juror and execution. Occasionally, I also set people on fire. Now, is the arms deal commission really just a deal for omissions? Is it true that Jomo Kenyatta International Airport is now a non-smoking zone? And did Alan Mark Craig really send Bodacoma Please call me a lawyer while in court the other day. We don't know the answers to any of these questions. What we do know is we've got a qualified chef who doesn't practice the trade and a Scot who's going home for a new set of bagpipes soon. He'll be back, though, hopefully without the bagpipes. He's promised the producers a bottle of Scotland's finest tap water because, after all, he is Scottish, isn't he? Introducing the challenger. He's not the Scot, incidentally. He is the chef. With four appearances, one loss and three wins, Mark Whitten from Kaizen AM. He is there with the champion, this week's champion, with seven appearances, four wins and three losses. Chris, I like to live in Scotland because nobody has to buy me a drink there. I don't have to buy one back. Gilmore, both my guests have pre-picked three shares. They're keeping them very close to their chest. It's kind of like poker because neither knows what the other holds. And at some point, they're going to poke each other's eyes out. That's the way their game is played. The longer they leave it, the longer they don't choose one of your competitor stocks, the more likely they are to have to accept something they really don't like. Each has got 30 seconds to argue their stock. Pick. So let's let the share shootout begin. But before we do that, are you really a chef? Mm. Grew up running the family business. We used to own the, uh, the Capri Hotel in, in Savoy and then you know Brazilian Eastgate. I trained at uh, Delis in Santa and then Villa Mora. Cheapers, and then you got a, then you just sold your soul. No, I just realised that that was really hard work. I wanted to do something a lot more relaxing. So the yeah. markets were just air-conditioned offices, much easier than standing in a hot kitchen Absolutely screaming and right. shouting. Well done, you can scream and shout at your screen all day long. Let's see how good you are at screaming and shouting. Do you want to go first, or do you want to let our Scottish friend no, go first? Chris can go first. Awesome. There we go. <sighs> Bottle of water for the producers. I don't think they deserve it, frankly. Uh, Chris Gilmore from Apps Investments. I'd like to know, please, why. You want to support a trillion rand synfest. 30 seconds on British American Tobacco, please. This is a company that a lot of people get wrong because they think because uh, tobacco and smoking generally is, is declining about 1% per annum globally, that this big company is going to go out of business. Nothing of the kind. It's actually doing extremely well in developing markets, and it's a very simple business model. And when tax increases come through, they're passed on to the consumer. It's a highly addictive thing. I don't do it. I don't like the, the habit, but I think in terms of investment, uh, it's wonderful. Okay, British American Tobacco in less than 30 seconds. He didn't even need his full-time allocation in order to do that, Mark. Unless they were business, I thought the clock would never stop. Do you like British American Tobacco? You know, I do. I think it's, it's probably one of the best run companies, one of the best products. It's sticky and it kills, unfortunately, it does kill its consumers. But Eventually, but it takes an awfully long time to do so. It does, it does indeed. Um, I, I must agree that uh, I think volumes are going to be on the decline. I think regulatory issues are the, the main concern. We have our own health minister is determined to stamp out smoking and drinking, but I think it's the amount of tax that government generates, I think it's about 70 to 80 percent of the cost of a, a packet of cigarettes. I don't think it'll be stamped out anytime soon. So I think it's, you know, between the fact that management is extremely strong, um, I know I should be arguing against the share, but we actually really like the business. So truth be told, I think this is probably going to be an easy one for me to... Okay, uh, but before you, before you do that, because yes, we have many great companies spoken about on the show, and many of the companies that are spoken about are phenomenal but they're lousy investments. Is British American Tobacco a great investment? I think if you see, if, you know, we're seeing a normalization of the yield curve you know, as interest rates are going up, the Fed's beginning tapering, et cetera. So potentially these very defensive businesses are, are, gonna, be, are gonna take a bit of a hit you know, in terms of the dividend yield, et cetera. But you know, net net, I think this is still a great investment for the long term. In the short term, I mean, all the rand hedges seemingly are quite overpriced, the SABs and BTIs. But in the long term, I think this is a, this is, this is a great story. Uh, in the short term, however, is there risk of RAND strength, which yes. is then going to undermine the share prices of the likes of Richemont, which had 100 bucks recently, British American Tobacco, many of the other diversified offshore I think, companies? I think that is, that is one of the big risks. You know, the, the foreigners have been very bearish on South Africa due to expectations of electricity cuts um, and rolling blackouts and very you know, violent strike action. And none of that's transpired, and we're almost through, through winter, you know, touch wood. So I think you know the rand has, is quite overdone. I think we see fair value at around nine rand, eight rand, eighty nine rand. You know, at, if the rand does come back to those levels, you could see a seven to eight percent hit to these to these shares in the short Do term. Do you wait? I would personally wait. I think there's a lot more momentum in the moment in the in the resource counters, um, and and you know foreigners are just very generally bearish on South Africa. But these counters, the prices are set. Some of the bigger resources in in the UK. So you like the company, you like the business, you were tempted to accept it. However, 
by your own admission, it is too expensive right now, and there could be a better opportunity to buy it at a 10% discount in the Yeah, there could be, but it could come up with some like random business next, like a VUSA or something, and then I'd be forced to accept a company which I don't like. So truthfully, I'd rather accept this <laughs> can, can, can you humor us and change your stock picks and come up with a VUSA which no longer exists? But uh, yes, of course, um, I, can, I can assure you um, that Times Media Limited is not on his list, but you've accepted it. Um, even though it's a little bit pricey right now, your recommendation would be, perhaps to hold back a little bit, put in an order a couple of percentage points below where we are at the moment, uh, and, and you'll probably pick, pick some up in the next yeah, couple of months cheaper I, than they are now. I think 3 to 4% down from here is a safe bet, and if it fell more than 5, I think we would become, it was one of our biggest holdings, it's now one of our smallest. Okay. But uh, between that, SAB, etc., we, we like the sin story. It's too bad there aren't you know, other vices that are listable. Don't you wish you could list all these vices, Chris oh, Gilmore? It would pleasure. be very good. What a pleasure. So vice wins the day. You get the big thumbs up for British American Tobacco. Market cap of one trillion rand, the biggest company on the JSE. And you can now buy shares directly in British American Tobacco. There was that convoluted structure initially, but they've undone that. And you can actually buy yourself seven British American Tobacco shares if you want to and keep those in the portfolio if you are of a mind to do so. Right now, Mark Whitten, here is, uh, you said you like the momentum in the resort. Also shares. Mm. He's sticking to your particular theme with probably the best diversified mining company that South Africans can get direct access to in this country. 30 seconds on BHP Billiton, please. Okay, so we like BHP in that it has, you know, uh, some of the best low-cost assets in the market. It's very well positioned for growth in China. Uh, you know, more than 80% of its revenue comes from, be it iron ore and petroleum, and to an extent copper. And we're seeing, you know, a lot of support for those for those uh, commodities in the short term. We're still very bullish at long term on the emerging market growth story. And even though China's slowing down, it's growing off a base of close to seven and a half trillion dollars. Um, you know, Africa is the fastest urbanizing continent in, in the world today. So I think the demand for commodities is there and BHP is very well underpinned. Okay, there we go. Do you like BHP? But isn't Chris Kimmel? It's hard to argue against. It's very hard to argue against. Now, we've got it uh, as a core holding for our clients. Um, we've liked it for a long time. We, we prefer it over Anglo. Um, this is a company that actually went out from day one and got into base metals and minerals. It was never distracted by any of the shiny stuff. <laughs> so, uh, so from that aspect, we like it. Um, you know, it's, it's not particularly expensive. Um, under the new leadership, I think uh, it's got a good chance of, of, of doing an awful lot better than it does, did under uh, Marius Kloppers. So, um, yeah, I have to say, I think um, I like this one. You, th you think you like it? Yeah, okay. I do. I, I, generally, resources, I have a bit of a problem at this point in time, because I suspect they probably have a little bit further to go. And as what Mark was saying, you know, I think the China story is, is going to be fairly unexciting for the next uh, year. But unexciting is fine, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. As long as it's sustainable and you can get China growing at 7 or 7.5%, 7 the demand stays intact. And that's got to be good. Is there, talking about one of the companies that produces shiny stuff, and that's Anglo Gold Ashanti, of course, Srinivasan Venkata Krishnan. I just like to say that because I can. Because you can. Yeah. Um, he is the chief executive of Anglo Gold Ashanti. He announced uh, recently that they're cutting uh, a good 40% of head office jobs. In, it's a gold mining company. It's a fundamentally different proposition. But those same sort of cost pressures surely apply across the rest of the mining sector. Does BHP Billiton have to go through that? Yes, they do. But, you know, they've always operated very much at the lower end of the cost curve. So uh, I, I can't fault them from that perspective either. So look, I mean, and, and they've, they've held back on a lot of their big projects like Olympic Dam, for example. So look, I, I, I look, it's very, very, it's a, it's, a, it's a tough one to say no to, it really is. At what point, Mark, is Anglo-American a better option than BHP Billiton, if ever? Um, well, I think Anglo-American at this point is starting to look like a bit of a, a, a horse with faster legs than, than BHP. Um, I think management's strong in both. I think Yuta Fani's, you know, he did reasonably good work at, at Anglo Gold. I think Anglo-American is sort of like Zimbabwe at the moment. It's not getting better, just less worse. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just looking like things are getting worse there. You know, Amplats with, with, with Chris Griffith there, you know, moving production from the, um, the high end, you know, the high cost curve operations in Rustenburg to the more open cost mining. Um, you know, I think that'll, that'll find an underpin there. And then you've got Kumba, which is still, session wasn't great, but you know, they are ramping up. Columella, which will pick up the slack. So I think Anglo's, from our point of view, is, is cheap. I think um, you know, a lot of bad news is priced in. All you need now is a bit of a turnaround in the Minas Rio story. You know, if yeah. you start actually getting to some sort of production, it's a great asset, you know, also very low on the, mm -hmm. on the cost curve. 
So I think overall we, we, we are quite bullish on commodities at this point in the But cycle. you're sticking with PHP Billiton? I am. And you like it, Chris Gilmore. You're going to give it the thumbs up? I'm going to give that one a thumbs up. I like it. Okay, BHP Billiton, uh, which has got a market cap of 600 billion rand on the JSE. Uh, PE ratio of 13 and a half times. It's not wildly expensive. And there's a nice story attached to it. So yeah. two thumbs up in the first part of the show. We should maybe call this share collaboration instead of shootout. You know what? Sometimes <laughs> great minds think alike. No, but sometimes <laughs> they do. And you know what? Collaboration is good because all that is set into the future is disappointment, letdowns, and tragedy. <laughs> you guys are going to stab each other in the back soon. I know it. I feel it. Because you might like it or you might not like it. The next share, which Chris Gilmore has got up his sleeve, it has been a very successful company. It's about 25 years old. It's a conglomeration of an assortment of businesses, mostly in the services sector. And one of its least spectacular assets is a stake in an airline called Comair. Right, 25% or thereabouts. 30 seconds, starting five seconds ago. Midvest, yeah. It's, uh, look, I, we, we actually like this stock. Uh, it's done incredibly well in the past few months. We reckon this has probably got 300 rands written all over the share price. Uh, a number of things in there. Although it's a conglomerate, there is, believe it or not, uh, a kind of common thread going through this. Mainly food services and tourism. Uh, and we're talking about people, really, at the end of the day. And I think Brian Joffe's um, private equity fund, as some people ungraciously call it, uh, is, is, is looking very, very good. And it's not necessarily tied just to the, 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 the South African uh, economy. The, the also business, the food services business is fabulous. So you're beginning to to regret mm -hmm. accepting British American tobacco now, Mark Whitten? No, I, I definitely still prefer British American over, over Bidbest. I think the big issue is, I mean, is Brian Joffe. I mean, he's kind of the, somebody should remind him that quitting while you're ahead is not the same as quitting. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, they were offered money to unbundle the food business, yes. decent money, and they, they don't seem to want to do it. So I'm not sure where you're going to see an unlock of value. We like the business. We think the world has moved towards logistics. Um, but you know, going forward, there's so many moving parts to the business, and nobody's quite sure what's going to happen when he decides if he decides to move on. So yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's not cheap. Um, you've got to you still have your problems in Europe, although you're seeing green shoots. You, you still have some serious some serious issues there. Mm. Uh, the food services business is an, a very attractive asset, and it's Brian Joffe's diversification away from high risk South Africa. He understands the labour issues. He understands the dynamic that many of his workers live in. You, you talk to him about that, and you know the, he's got some good horror stories of the, the sort of lives that some of his workers live and the threats that come uh, during strike times. It's a tough environment to operate. He wants that diversification. Should he have sold? Look, I think there's, there's, there's many ways to realize value. I think if you just kind of put it, laid out some sort of roadmap or gave us the intention that at some point there will be an unlock of value. This latest bid or this run on, on Adcock, you know, it was, kind of, I think, poorly conceived, poorly timed, not well communicated. So I think that from that point of view, it looks like they're starting to run out of options for growth. And that's my concern is that you've got a great asset in the food business, but you need to see, we, we hold it in our portfolio for a mm -hmm. while, betting on the unlock, the unbundling of this business, potentially a separate listing. And after a while, we just, you know, the, the price has performed very well, but at some point now, we think there's better value to be had. You're shooting it down. Definitely. Well, yeah, without any ceremony. You're shot down on Bidvest, I'm afraid there. Oh. Uh, Chris Gilmore from APSA Investments. Then tell me, in 30 seconds, Mark Whitten, mm. why Ixaro, sticking with your resources theme, is a good idea? 30 seconds. No, it's actually a bad idea. We want to be short. You want to be short this one. Thanks yes. for telling us. Good. Well, basically, th there's a few reasons. One, Madupi could see you're delayed. So, you know, there's going to be a, 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 a late delivery of coal, even though those are tight operations. Two, the price of coal continues to come off. Um, you know, there's an oversupply of both metallurgical and general coal, thermal coal. Um, at the same time, the greatest source of revenue or the most profitable business is the uh, stake in the Sishan Arnold complex, which is under pressure. Lastly, I can't get any numbers out of the, um, the critical luck expansion. It's almost a third of their market cap, and I can get no understanding of what the return on capital will be. And lastly, the mineral sands business, the pigment business, is mm. just not a great business to be in. Your 30 seconds are up. Exaro, a short on Exaro. Well, now this is fascinating because I've never had this experience before of actually <laughs> giving someone giving me a short. I, t I told you that he would stick, stick wow. a bicycle spoke to your This is truly fascinating. Um, I, you know, I hate to say this, but I have to agree entirely <laughs> with, with, with Mark because, you know, we did have Exara and we yes. got rid of it some, some time ago for, for, for those the reasons you're, you're, you're talking about. I mean, coal, I think, in the longer term, yes, will still have an awful lot of attraction. Yet it is very dirty. Um, but at some point in time, I think it's going to come under tremendous pressure in South Africa because it will probably will be declared an, a national asset. But, he, but here, we, here we've got, got this great debate over coal because uh, Brian Dumas, the chief executive mm. of Eskom, keep, keeps complaining about the rising price of coal. He wants it to be co yeah. declared a strategic asset, a strategic mineral, so that less of it will be exported and he'll know what he can pay for it into the future, hopefully thereby keeping our electricity bills down. Mm. Does Exaro face that particular pressure? 
I think, I think to a certain extent it does. Okay, there's not a lot, lot of export uh, mm. uh, the, the element of it as well. But I think uh, at some point in time, you know, there is no new capacity in terms of extracting coal mm. going into place right now in South Africa. We could see a crunch as early as 2015. So I think when that happens, we're going to start seeing uh, Eskom applying a, a lot of pressure. Mm. So I think some of these coal producers could be under some severe pressure because they will not be getting those export pr prices to the same extent. Share collaboration this evening. So you're giving his short on Exaro the thumbs up. Yeah, this, this is really, this is, this is a very clever maneuver. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> you see, he's a sneaky blighter. That's what happens in the kitchen. Sharp knives, be careful. Okay, so both of our stock pickers saving their best shots for last. Let's just run you through what they've been talking about. Mark Whitten, uh, long on BHP Billiton, and Chris Gilmore likes BHP Billiton, so thumbs up on that one. Then Mark Whitten plays dirty, and he's got a short on Exaro, explaining very eloquently why. Chris Gilmore has to support it. So, from Share Collaboration and Vichy, uh, Chris Vichy Gilmore has uh, supported that. So, he's two down so far uh, in our debate about shares tonight. Chris Gilmore from Apps Investments, British American Tobacco got the thumbs up, but Bidvest in a share shootout got shot down. Two more picks to come after the break. See you in a moment.